Hi everyone and welcome back. Do you want to speak with an American accent like your favourite celebrities? Well, as a British person, today I'll try and provide you with some tips to really nail that American accent. I'm Thomas, one of the IELTS teachers here at IELTS Lango, and I'm really happy that you've come back today so that I can bring you a little bit more useful knowledge. All right, so let's focus on speaking like an American. The first tip for you is to learn how to do the standard American R. Now, this is one of the most challenging sounds in American English. First, your lips are slightly rounded and the corners come in, protruding your lips away from your teeth. R, R, R. British English, R. American English, R. Your tongue is high up in your mouth and pushed back so that the sides of the tongue are in contact with the insides of your upper molars. You should ensure that your tongue touches the molars, otherwise you won't produce the true sound. R, R, R. Okay, now let me show you some examples. Can you try to say this sentence? 44 purple dragons appeared at my door. An American would say, 44 purple dragons appeared at my door. But the British speaker, 44 purple dragons appeared at my door. Okay, guys, let's have a seat and see how your R sound has improved in the last week. Ah! Hold on, I want to tell you that I've lost a rubber rain boot and I'm afraid my mother will scream at me tomorrow. I've lost my rubber rain boot and I'm afraid my mother will scream at me tomorrow. By the way, teacher, I can pronounce the sentence that you gave me last time in the American way. 44 purple dragons appeared at my door. Wow, your pronunciation is much better now. Really? What a heartwarming co- uh, Really? What a heartwarming comment. Okay, guys, so we focused on our R sound. The second sound that you need to master here is the T sound. Now, there are two different types. The first type is the stopped T sound. When you produce this sound, your tongue will stop at the top of the mouth, and the air flowing is stopped either by your tongue or your lips. And that's why we call it a stop. T, a stopped T. This type of sound often occurs when T is at the end of the word. Let's have a little practice here to see what I mean. British English. We thought he wouldn't come late that night. American English. We thought he wouldn't come late that night. Late that night. Late that night. Late that night. It's a much softer sound in American English. Now, as you can see, I don't make the T sound like I do in British English, T, T, T. I keep the tongue on the top of my mouth. All right, let's have a look at what I mean again. We thought he wouldn't come late that night. He thought he wouldn't come late that night, late that night. And here are some other examples of the stopped T. Remember when it's at the end of the word and not followed by any vowel. British English first. I want that fruit basket to be put in the room of the president. I want that fruit basket to be put in the room of the president. British English first. People doubt that he doesn't like his current job as service staff at the airport. People doubt that he doesn't like his current job as service staff at the airport. Airport, airport. Airport, airport. Did you mimic me correctly? Let's pause the video and practice. Okay, guys, now we're going to look at the second type of sound here, which is the flapped T or D. When the letter T appears at the beginning and the end of the word, keep it as a T. However, if it comes in the middle of the word, between two vowels or diphthongs, it's identical to a D sound, right? D, T, D, T. And it is critical not to overdo it. 
And you can see this type of sound in the following words. British English first. Little, 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 little. Butter, 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 butter. You can see how that T changes to a D, right? If I'm British, I put on the kettle. An American, kettle. Kettle, kettle. Winter, winter. Winter, winter. Thirty, thirty. Thirty, thirty. Hospital, hospital. Hospital, hospital. And you should be able to hear it in these pair of word sounds. Take a second to practice them now. Now remember that when T comes before a schwa sound, and this sound is unstressed in the word, this also turns into the D sound. Auto, auto. Gotta, gotta. Let me show you those again, guys. Auto, auto. Gotta, gotta. I've got to get my auto fixed. I've got to get my auto fixed. Finally, the third type of sound here, guys, is the glottal T. If the T comes after N, regardless of the position, the T sound is gone and not pronounced. You can come across this sound in the following words. Listen and repeat. Interview, 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 interview. International, 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 international. Internet, 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 internet. Gotten, garden, gotten, garden. And this continues throughout the examples, guys. Sent, sen. Environment, environment. Department, department. All right, let's practice with some following sentences. It's the interview with the international pageant who has gotten the most important prize through an internet program. And then in American English, it's the interview with the international pageant who has gotten the most important prize through an internet program. Internet program, internet program. One more longer example here, guys. British first. This is a sentence that mainly states the pollutant issue of the environment. And if I want to do that in an American accent, there is a sentence that mainly states the pollutant issue of the environment. If you can master the contractions with will and s after a vowel, this will be a way of combining the sound with the apostrophe and to still be grammatically correct. You can try these sounds, for example. You all, y'all, y'all. You can say you all, but to make it more American, you have to pronounce it y'all, y'all. Going to, gonna, going to, gonna, got to, gotta, got to, gotta, give me, gimme, give me, gimme, it would, it did, it would, it did, we would have, we'd have, or we'd have. And that's it for today. I hope that these simple tips will help you improve your speaking skills. I hope you found this lesson helpful in getting you ready for that test. And if you'd like to sign up for IELTS classes here at Lango, please click on the link below. Our IELTS courses are designed with you in mind to provide personalized learning pathways. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell button to get notifications of our latest uploads. Once again, I've been Thomas at Lango Learning Systems and thank you very much for enjoining me today. Goodbye.